again. Here itself, I will show you X lookup with approximate match. All right, we're going with exact match over here, and therefore I was able to find um, the cust customer and the order ID corresponding to the customer. Now let's say somebody is looking for. I'm looking for this word. I'm looking for a customer whose name is this. All right, what will happen? That person is not there in the list of customers. It is not found. There is no order ID. So not found condition has come. Right. We are looking up for this. In, and this is the range where we are looking it up. This is the range that is going to be returned. But in this case, the not found scenario came true because this customer is not present. And because I'm going for an exact match, match mode is exact match, right? Zero. I couldn't get anything. This is fine. When the customer is not there, we get not found. That is perfectly fine. But if we use a minus one over here, because there are other attributes here, right? If we use minus one, what should happen? Exact match. And if it is not found, the next smaller item. Minus one is exact match or the next smaller item. So I will take the, this negative one and see what will happen here. It pulled back 151799. 151799 is over here. Let me highlight it. This is the customer I'm looking for. B, H. And prior to that, which alphabet? Prior to that, B, E, E, F, G, H, right? So you're getting it, right? When we go smaller, it's going and fetching this value. Now, instead, if I go and use plus one, exact match or the next larger item, the next larger item. So it, definitely there is not, uh, that customer is not there. So what did it pull, pull back? This uh, ID. Okay, 158792. 158792. And look at the name of the customer. The customer that I was looking for, the name is Bhargav, isn't it? And because exact match was not there, it went to the next higher item, next greater item. So what's the next greater item? After BH, it found BR. H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-R. Right? Alphabetically, it's going uh, uh, in this case. So I hope you all understood that we can use 0 or we could use minus 1 for a lower number or we could use plus 1 for a higher number. Okay, Mohan, you're telling me that for 7,500, it is supposed to be 20%, but we got 30%. Because it's not finding an exact match, and it, when, it, when it doesn't find an exact match, it goes to the next higher value. Okay, in that case, this formula doesn't work. Okay, fine. I got your point. I got it. Right. So, so far, is it clear, everybody? We have discussed about the limitation of VLOOKUP that it can't look up for a value that is present on the left side of, of uh, you know, the data. So I can't look up for order ID given customer name, but I can look up customer name given order ID. To overcome that particular drawback of VLOOKUP, we can use XLOOKUP. Then we looked at how we can use XLOOKUP by using the match value as either zero or minus one or plus one. 0 or minus 1 or plus 1. So with these three variants, when the exact value match is found, fine. If it is not found, it will depend on whether you have defined minus 1 or plus 1. If it's minus 1, it goes to the smaller value. If it is plus 1, it goes to a higher value. Okay, with this name example, I hope it's clear. And uh, the advantage of XLOOKUP is it is irrespective of the direction. It works in any direction and it returns the value that we are looking for. Now, we will see one more drawback of VLOOKUP using the same data that we are working with. So let's say, um, given the order ID, okay? Here only we'll work on it. No problem. The client is going to give the order ID by mentioning the order ID over here. Given the order ID, 
I am sub okay. Given the order ID, I am supposed to pull back the customer name, the profit, and the sales. For whatever order ID is mentioned over here, we have to bring the other detail. We can always use XLOOKUP instead of VLOOKUP. Yes. Yes. You can comfortably use XLOOKUP all the time. You can forget VLOOKUP if it is available, if XLOOKUP is there. Okay. Does XLOOKUP take table array? No, it takes the um, array where you're searching for it and the return array, the, the, not the entire table. So precisely we can go and tell where to look for and what to pull back, Prashant. That is the advantage. You don't have to give the table array with XLOOKUP. You can give only the range that you are focused on. I'll, I'll show you. With this example, it will become more clear. With this, whatever we are discussing now, na, whatever doubts you all have will get clarified. See this? So the user is going to enter the order ID over here. Let's say uh, the user has given me the order ID. It will be entered here. This is dynamic. They might change it. We need to pull back the customer name, profit, and sales. We know that we can do this with VLOOKUP, right? We can comfortably do it with VLOOKUP. What I'll do is, um, let me just give a name to this range so it will be easier for me. Superstore range. In the superstore range, I'm going to look up equal to VLOOKUP. I'm drawing a comparison so that it will be easier for you all to understand how VLOOKUP is, uh, XLOOKUP is much more better compared to VLOOKUP. We look up, comma, this is the value I'm looking at, where in this table array, what is the table array? I have given it a name, F3 key gives the name range, and this is over here I want to look up. And bring back which column, customer name. You can use the match function, which we already saw, or we can simply, simply give two. This is small data, so two. And I'm going for an exact match. This should be clear to everybody. Can I... Bring profit and sales also along with customer name over here. We can't. Okay, we can return only, we can pull back only one column, which is column number two. So it, it is returned, uh, what was this? This is the order ID and Neil Cohen is the customer, which it returned. Now, if I need to get profit, I have to repeat it. We look up, look up this value. In this particular range of data, the table array, and this time return back column number three. So it's bringing the profit and then it will bring the sales. Okay, similarly, sales. Now, the same thing I will do with the next lookup. With X lookup, what happens is this is my lookup value, and I need to look up this value in this column. Okay, in that column, I have to look up for that value. Let me fix that range. Okay, anyway, we'll not pull down, so it's okay. And the return array. The return array, if I give only customer name, okay, it will pull back the customer name. It will pull back the customer name, Neil Cohen. Now, in the return array, what we can do is, this is what I have right now. I can even give a range. Pull back all the data in that range. Okay, so what is it doing? It's not just the customer name column. It's going from B2 all the way to D103. All the way to D103. So it is going to look at the complete range of data and pull back everything in that range. Look at that. Got it? I don't have to separately again write for each column my formula because here I just gave the range. It pulled back everything in that range. In one go, we were able to fetch multiple values. So this is the advantage of XLOOKUP, second advantage. Unlike VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP can return an array with multiple items. So with a single formula, we can we manage to return customer name, we manage to return the profit, and we manage to return the sales also. Second advantage. Okay. One is it is irrespective of the direction. Second thing is, we can even return an array, not just one item. We can return an array with multiple items in it. So provided it is continuous range like that, you can return an array. 